sometimes if you're packed for the backcountry, you're going to have a mirror with you. How many of you guys carry mirrors in the backcountry when you're hiking mountains and things? It's a very, very good thing to have. Why? Megan, right? Yeah. Why is it a good thing to have, Megan? You can. Give me one. Besides this, this is kind of fun though. Oh, I do that all the time when I'm out hiking. Sarcasm. I, I, I was, I was, I was, I predicted this. I got excited for a second, and then I'm like completely sarcastic. What's a more traditional use of a mirror for? Um, as like signaling. Yes, yeah. signaling. SOS, I'm in trouble, or hey, I made it to the top of the mountain, I'm on my way back down now. Yeah. Start a fire with it. Start fire. You can start a fire with it, couldn't you? Oh, wait, I don't know how to do that with a, with a mirror. Flint no. and steel, I can start a fire with. A magnifying glass. A magnifying glass, yes, I can't. But with yes. fire, you need to refract it oh, to a wait. point, right? Yeah. Can you start a fire with a mirror? Yeah. You, you might be able to, you know what, hey, hey, hold this for a week. If you've got a bunch of mirrors, you totally can. Actually, Fancy, I think you break the mirror. It, okay, now that, I buy that. Because as soon as you break it, you create probably a, a, a confluence of the rays. And if you have a, a few of them together, like three or four, you can actually build a parabola and focus that way. I was thinking, it's more like a signal thing, and it's crazy. But when I climbed Broken Top, this is about a year ago or so, I climbed Broken Top, and I was able to signal my friends down at Green Lakes, I mean, they were able to see, the, they could see my head, kind of, but they could see that, that light is so bright. Pretty amazing, pretty amazing. Please. I was telling the Archimedes death ray. Yeah. The Archimedes death ray? Yeah. Oh, the one where he actually was able to take a magnifying glass and set the Roman ship on fire? Yeah, the mirrors. You've heard that story too? I love that one. Archimedes was the man. We're going to get in and talk about him later on. Yeah. I've often thought about making him an entire topic of Math 105. He yeah. He also invented the lever and water display. Eureka, I have found it. You guys have learned, you guys have heard the legends of Archimedes. Oh, this makes me so happy. Considered one of the three greatest mathematicians of all time, besides Newton and Gauss. A German. Ugh. Archimedes was Greek. Great. Water displacement. When you get in a tub, water rises. And then the lever, which we I mean, how many of you guys have used a lever in your life? Put your hand up, you all have. Because you've all sat on a seesaw. And anybody, anybody ever used a long 2x4 to move that big heavy rock? Yes. Thank Archimedes, he discovered it. I mean, amazing dude. Amazing. The, the death ray. I've never heard it called the death ray. That's fantastic. Yeah, he also developed the one, the Romans were attacking Greece. Yeah. And uh, he developed, it was kind of shaped like this on the end of a ship. He would, they would send the Greek ship out and it would puncture the Roman ship and start it sinking. And the Greeks would run across the thing and kill the Romans on board. And Archimedes, I mean, these guys are treasure, you know? He was, he was treasured so much by not just the Greeks, but the Romans, that the Romans said, no one harms this man. If, he is, if you find him in Greece during a raid, you bring him back, what happened to him? You obviously heard the story. Uh, I can't remember. It was a long, long time, a long, long time ago. Do you remember what happened to Archimedes? No. He's called the Sand Reckoner, because he used to just sit down in the middle of the streets of wherever and just start doing math problems in the dirt. You know, it's always it's Archimedes walk around him. You know, but I mean, he's also keeping, keeping whatever, I can't think of the town in Greece right now where he's from, Syracuse, Syracuse maybe? But Romans overran the city, and they see this old dude playing in the dirt. Get up, old man. And he says, excuse me, get out of my way, you're blocking my light. And they killed him right then. They didn't recognize him. And they killed him. Nobody knows where his body is. Oh my God. It, it sucks. No one knows where Archimedes is to this day. It's, it's just one of those terrible, terrible things. Treasure of mathematical thought and and uh, and history lost it lost to history because of that goofy little yeah amazing amazing so anyway anyway I have to press the hell out of you but that's very very cool about Archimedes. Well, he was honored in uh, the Camelot story they named uh, uh, Merlin's owl. Yes, the owl. Exactly. Oh, I'm not saying he's gone unknown. I mean, just physically, we don't know where he physically. We we know where Gauss's grave is, and I think we know where Newton's grave is. And these these are just as the, the giants of mathematics. Um, yeah. Amazing dude. Amazing dude. What about Euclid? How, Euclid's another one. Wait, oh my god. Will this be a math history course? They could totally make it. Euclid, Euclid's the granddaddy of geometry. So, kind of what we're doing right now. Let's, we can have some coffee and talk about this after class is over. How about this one? It looks different to me. I only see, I don't even see two triangles. I don't see two triangles. <laughs> ah, they're overlapping. So, you can break them apart, and I think I personally think, as Amy said, it's smarter to break them apart. Because if you don't break them apart, you run the risk of confusing this little eight over here. As a side, it really isn't. Eight, the eight is a side of this thing called a trapezoid right here. And I think I marked this on your paper. Those are supposed to be right angles there. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I did mark them there. Good. So let's, let's color code them again, if that's okay with you guys. That one and this one. And I didn't bother putting Jerry's little dots in this one, did I? It's because it's 
sides. Overlapping. Because they're overlapping, this angle is the same as itself. So when I break them apart, the little green guy goes up here. The little red guy, whoops. The little red guy goes here. We got the right angles tucked in the corners. It's like Christmas up here. And then we, all we gotta do now is make sure we have the correct measurements in the correct places. That's all. So let's see, this 10 is on the green triangle. It looks like it's this piece here. And again, David, it's back to your, your question about correspondences. This is why it's nice to have the original picture here. Because who corresponds to the 10? Who corresponds to the 10 on this red triangle over here? Yes. Absolutely. Absolutely. And again, this is where if you're not 100% like, I don't quite see that yet, put the correspondence dots in. Right? You blew them apart, but then don't forget that these angles were nested on top of each other. So when you blew them apart, those angles stay corresponding. And then if you want to, you could also put double correspondence dots in that top angle. And now you know they're exactly corresponding. Cool so far? Excellent. Please, Josh. Are the double dots necessary? Though? No, not necessary at all. But if you need that extra kind of like, okay, I'm not exactly sure what 10 is between. It's between the right angle and double dots or right angle and no dots. That's, I mean, calling them no dots is the same as calling them double dots if you think about it, as long as you call them consistently. Fair? Cool. All right. Who's here? Huh? Mm-hmm. Svan Svansig? Yeah. <coughs> Sorry. Who's here? Eight, right? Twenty-two plus eight. Thirty. Good. You got you, right? Yeah. Wait, Brittany? Yes. Brittany, yes. We gotta add that. That's why I think it's so important to break these guys apart. This red triangle, it starts with twenty-two, but it's got eight more. So this guy's thirty, yes? Mm -hmm. That length down there is thirty. Yeah, that's why I think it's crucial to break these guys apart. And now every single problem on the board is the same. Even though there are three different initial setups. That's the beauty. That's okay. That's okay. I'm not saying you have to do it this way. I'm just saying that these are all the same problem. And this is what I think so many students have trouble with mathematics at a very young age. They try to view mathematics as a series of disparate, disconnected ideas. When in fact, that's exactly the opposite of the way guys like Archimedes and Euclid and Hypatia, one of the greatest female mathematicians of all time, that's exactly the opposite of the way they went at mathematics. They tried to see how everything was connected which is kind of how I've defined Math 105, to see how things connect to each other. This is all grade, right? It's all slope. It's all rise and run. Boom, rise and run, 10 to 22. Ow, there's your grade. It's a pretty steep road, actually. All right, 10 to 22. And who's that correspond to? X to 30. Yes, X to 30. Boom. Solve it, you're done. Solve it, you're done. What do you get, like 14 something? 13.6, 13. 13. we'll call it that. I love it. Any way you want to solve it, you go ahead and solve it. Call it 13.6 on the happy guy. I mean, try to see how the problems are the same. Don't try to view mathematics. And I know for a lot of you, this is your last math course. You're like, great, thanks for telling me this now after 12 years of misery. <laughs> and I apologize for that. But it should focus more on how things are connected, how the mathematics is connected. I think very often they rush you guys into algebra and geometry classes too soon. And before you're ready to see those connections, the networks. You've heard about how the brain, how the brain the synapses form, right? The synapses form, you've got all these little synapses in your brain. And as you learn skills, you begin to make connections between them. Math is the exact same way. Until you begin to realize, here's the idea of similar triangles. And you begin to realize how many ideas link back to that. And if you can find that link, all you've got to do is make sure you know that because it'll get sucked right back to that idea and then it becomes the same problem over and over again. You'll get bored after a while, like I can solve this too. Bored. That's good. That's a good thing mathematically. Yeah, I think, personally. Any questions on any of the three? These are gorgeous, gorgeous work. Gorgeous work. I got a quiz, for, I got a couple more of these on, on Wednesday for you. Knock them out if you want to. Uh, application of this one. Can anybody think of an application of this one? Let me ask you, can you think of an application? of where you, would, uh, where you would use this one. What do you think? Think about it for a couple seconds. Actually, think about it and take your five. And then we'll come back before we get to the next thing and we'll see what you come up with. And it's okay if you can't. I'll give you a hint. That was your hint, just so you know. Hi, Pam, what's up? <laughs> 